So I'll, I'll just start with one question. Um, I know that this is such a, a, an unusual film because it really feels like a narrative. Um, so I just know, I, I believe there were over 300 hours of footage that you, you shot for this documentary. And um, you said before that the unsung heroes are, especially of documentary filmmaking, are the editors. So I just wanted to ask you as a starting point is, um, you know, what was the initial intent of this film? And then how did it develop as you, you know, it took twists and turns. You certainly didn't expect a lot of the things to unfold as they did. So if you could just tell us um, kind of how you started the relationship between Romulo and, and Sergio, and then sort of how it, how it developed and how the editing of these 300 hours really, you know, formed this narrative feeling documentary. Uh, yeah, the, well, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it was a film that starts for a completely different uh, starting point. It was the idea of make a documentary about a private detective. Mm -hmm. And I researched a lot of private detective agencies until I met Romulo, that is the main character. Mm -hmm. and, and I saw different cases that he works on. And when I saw the case of retirement home, I thought that it was a kind of place that I can shoot by my own because here the big challenge was like how to shoot an infiltrate or a mole without expose the case with the, my camera. Like I'm going to be obvious that I was shooting a mole. So uh, as I make previous films in retirement home, I thought that that kind of world, it was a place that I can enter with my camera with another excuse. In this case was to make a film of this place. Uh, and we say to the owners, we want to shoot the good things and the bad things, but we didn't say that we were going to shoot them all. So we enter before Sergio arrives to the place. And when he arrives, we act as we don't know each other. So, so we were wait, making our observational documentary. And, and about the narrative, yeah, it was like four months of shooting and four months of be there in the observation. And, and the narrative, like it's completely different of what I thought at the beginning because as I wanted to make a film about, about a private detective, my development script was completely focused on the private detective case, on the client that I shoot her a lot, uh, on all the clues to understand what was happening with her mother. But I had to, I realized in the editing that it was not necessary because Sergio, that it's my, my main character, was the worst spy in the world, and he was not worried really about that. He was worried about that at the beginning, but, but then he's commit with the people there. So in certain point, I have to leave my original narrative mm -hmm. to commit with him, with his goals. So the film changed in the editing, and the challenge was how to focus on what he's feeling or which is his experience and to leave my original idea and put it only like a starting point as it was. And, and then to bring the story to the characters that were living there and not in the case that I wanted to follow. Mm -hmm, exactly. And the relationship between Sergio and Romulo was so interesting. And, and I was like, I was shocked at the beginning at how like how angry he got, like, you know, I'm, you know, he felt so pressured to record the notes every day. And, and you, like you said, you could see him slowly getting more and more attached and, you know, and connected, like in a genuine way to the residents. And it was, it was just incredibly touching. And it was, for me, it was really frustrating because I was really expecting to make like this film about the case and the resolution and that relationship that I thought it was going to continue after and each fight for me was like pain, like terrible. And each mistake of Sergio was also like for me, like we are we are going to be discovered, like this film is not going to finish because like he really spoke with 
open calls like all the time. <laughs> like he really goes to the nurse to ask, ask for the medicine. It was like, I know. <laughs> and I cannot say nothing because it's the both that for me was one of the characters that I was following. So I cannot direct him inside the retirement home. So uh, yeah, it was difficult to leave my original idea. And I, I have to say like, when I make the research with Romulo, he makes this kind of research, but he usually work with a mold mm -hmm. that was working with him for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. but two months before shooting, it was Oscar that was 80 years old. He broke his hip. Mm -hmm. So that's why he put the ad in the newspaper. And I was like really concerned because I make the research with Oscar that was a police inside the retirement home. So he really makes the report. He really was like a police. And Sergio was completely the opposite. And for me, the beginning, it was like, why is he writing the, the report and sending it in voice? It was like, I can't believe this. But then, of course, that it's perfect. But, but it was not what I researched uh, in the original project. So... It was all the time to try to adapt to the reality. Documentaries are that, but in this case, it was completely that. Like you have an idea and you see in the film, the original idea, you see the, the film noir tone all the time and you see the, the goals to make a research, but then like, uh, like this film noir mm -hmm. became an observational documentary because of him, yeah. Well, you, you described in uh, film noir in, in another interview, you you said like the client then was like the femme fatale, you know, we were wondering yeah. about, who was it, is it this one, is it this one, and then we finally met her, and I know you had to be very careful in filming her, and Sergio for that matter, um, not to arise suspicion, but but that's so interesting how you're, you can build up to suspense to just regular people, um, and in that interview process, when the ad was placed, um, you had, right, he had many, many gentlemen apply for that position, right? Which was kind of an interesting fact, right? It was really interesting because I really thought that nobody's going to came to that interviews. And it was like when, when Oscar broke his hip, it was like, okay, I don't have a film. And, and Romulo said, let's put the ad, this ad in the newspaper. And I think that 100 people call and he makes like 50 interviews and all of them were super good mm -hmm. choices for me like mm -hmm. they were people that really want to work and they were super yeah. active and yeah and intelligent like but yeah at the end I think that Sergio like I also tried to convince Romula that Sergio was a good candidate and I have an opinion there because in the research I work as as a Romulo assistant for a couple of months. Oh. So I, I work with clients with him. And of course that we never say that I, I was a filmmaker, but, but we have a lot of confidence. And, and for Romulo, he was a, a good character because it was a very machism thought mm -hmm. that he doesn't have a wife. So he's going to be independent. And the other candidate that he, he liked, he went with his wife to the interview, so he has doubts. And I take that doubt <laughs> because like for me, Sergio from the first time, like he shows his feeling in the interview. Like in a job interview, he said like, I'm a widower, like I'm not living a painful situation. So you never say that in a job interview. and no men's and no Latin American men's at his 85, like they are not showing emotion. So for the first moment, he was like really connect with his experience and with his emotion. So that was something that I get touched in that interview. And he was funny and he was like asking things all the time. So yeah, he has a light that for me was important, but like, there were many super good too. So uh, it was a surprise for me and a really unexpected situation to have all that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a question from, uh, from Beth. She asked, um, do you know where Sergio is now and what did he think of the film? Sorry, can you repeat me? Oh yeah. Um, 
Beth asks, um, do you know where Sergio is now? And what did he think of the film? Sergio now became like a rock star in Chile. <laughs> he's like, if you put the TV, he's in all the commercials now. He's like, a, he has a manager. He's shooting <laughs> ads all the time. He's shooting ads for uh, teeth for old people, for and fun for pensions, for a soup, for a pharmacy. Like now he's buying an apartment with all the money that he's making <laughs> for the ads in the TV. Like he's really, really, really a rock star. <laughs> and yeah, he's happy with that because he, he was living with her daughter that yeah. like he's 87 now. Mm -hmm. And now he's buying, yeah, his apartment with these. And yeah, uh, he's re really, really, really happy and um, he loved the film and mm -hmm. and he thought that the film really represents his experience and also the owners of the of the retirement home love the film like they really feel that the film it's representing them like we enter with a big little lie i always say like to didn't say to them that was a film about a mall only mm -hmm. to say them that it was a film about the place but when they saw it they really feel that all the experience that they live are there. Right. And it was so nice, like one of the final comments was um, when the detective was writing to the family of the client, you know, and basically said, this is a beautiful place. You know, your, your mother, the residents are very well cared for. You know, she's lonely. And that's the bottom line that was so touching with this. Yeah, and was like, you only can say that living the experience. I also have the project when I enter. Mm -hmm. And and, and it's like, if you see the place from outside, of course that you are going to see bad things. Like, of course that someone is stealing the things of the mother, but it's Marta. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, people can fall, but it's that kind of accident happened. And, happened to me in my home with my kids and that doesn't mean that I don't care him mm -hmm. well like uh, there are other things that you are not seeing when you're outside and you only can see it being inside so for me it was also that like I can't have prejudged because if you see the information like clean mm -hmm. yeah you can say it's not good or it's not perfect mm -hmm. but it's completely different to leave it it's like for me, it's super important the conversation when Sergio is saying to, to Romulo, like, Marta is the one that still thinks, but you cannot get angry with her because she doesn't know what she's doing. And he said, like, great, we know who is stealing. She's, she's a rat. And it's like, <laughs> no, but if you yeah. saw it from outside, yeah, mm -hmm. she's the thief. But if you know her, Right. You cannot make that prejudge. Right. So, like that is the invitation here. It's like when you observe situation and when you observe experience, mm -hmm. you can change your approach and you can be more tolerant and you can, uh, yeah, be more open mind. But we never saw the experience really. Like we we read the facts mm -hmm. and the facts are that one. Yeah, right. Someone steal their things, of course. Right. Uh, she has an accident. Yeah, but the nurse are really taking care of her like and are more deep problems that then are not quantifying problems are more quality problems. Right. it's like you cannot put thing in a report but Sergio put it in a report because he make another kind of report but probably the police that i researched at the beginning will make another kind of reports more in facts mm -hmm. but but he described uh, emotion and experience yeah yeah. Does anyone have a, any other questions? Feel free to unmute yourselves or um, do, do you think that conversation has been started with your film where people are talking more about, especially since we've all been through this more isolating time with the pandemic, um, are people talking more about the loneliness of, you know, people, especially in these in these kind of residences where you you're being neglected by your busy adult children or you're widowed and you don't have family nearby like is that really you know is that one of the main goals as the film developed and and your hope to get that conversation started yeah i think that we when we premiered the film our goal was or we always say like 
please call your parents or please call your grandparents like to make that call mm -hmm. but one month later pandemic starts so people instinctively start to call mm -hmm. and what happening that like for me the discussion was like last year retirement homes mm -hmm. at least in latin america started to be in the public agenda or in the discussion that they were never before and funds for pension people started to be in a discussion in chile that was never before and i make a lot of screening in spain and in, in spain also the retirement homes were never in the media and they started to appear and and what we said like the life of the people inside the retirement home that we shoot Mm -hmm. didn't change with pandemic mm -hmm. because they were already isolated so mm -hmm. they we say like the pandemic of the loneliness was already there mm -hmm. like and what do they have to do in the quarantine they close mm -hmm. the door for visitors right. but they already don't have visitors so what happened that the people the families that never call start to be conscious Mm -hmm. of how much time passes without call and they started to call mm -hmm. but uh, it was a barrier that already exists it the only change it it put it in evidence for the people that was not there i think okay and uh we had a question about the family of, of the client um did you hear back from them like their response to the film and the story yeah completely okay yeah they there were a lot of families that start to visit after to see the film but i think it's a mix between the film and the pandemic okay. but the characters that was really abandoned like the one that the past years without visitors no that that didn't change okay okay it was so wonderful to see sergio get like so emotional especially toward the end of the film uh you know at the party and when he was dancing like he just became this like true True friend, you know, it's very moving. Um, okay, I did want to ask, a, and I know you you don't have too much. You have till eight thirty. So, by way of asking what you might be working on in the future, I just wanted to. Uh, it was a question somebody had asked you about the documentary genre in general. Um, I'll just read you the the quote. People have tuned into this film and have learned about Chilean culture along with the subject matter. Documentaries are a big part of increased attention. Excuse me, attention to Chilean cinema. And this is the thing, people are trying to figure out the past and the future. And so how do you see yourself like fitting into that role of film, you know, educating social movements in the country like this, um, you know, recording what's happened in the past, but projecting into the future, like where do you see documentary in general and yourself in particular? Yeah, I think that documentaries or the kind of documentaries that I make are a way to see the society from micro worlds mm -hmm. like as i said before like documentaries are inviting you for to live an experience mm -hmm. that you are never going to see in that intimacy because you only see your life in that intimacy or fiction films in mm -hmm. that like particular way or that yeah in that intimate story so if you see the society from that micro world you understand the facts like when you see like yeah all people is abandoned in mm -hmm. retirement home like that what what really means like mm -hmm. what they are really living like here you see it and and living the experience you can move mm -hmm. and you can make a, you can be an activist but after to live the particular situation so i think that the role of documentary for me and the role of cinema it's to approach the debates or the discussions that are happening in society and in politics but through a personal story because politicians are going to put the statistics are going to put the facts mm -hmm. but are not going to put uh, the life cases mm -hmm. or when they describe it mm -hmm. like i saw a presidential debate well, a couple of days and they try to put examples yeah. but the examples are not like really like illustrating mm -hmm. situations Absolutely. yeah
And that's what you remember. You remember the personal story. We yeah. showed a film called Beyond 60 a couple of months ago. And it was just profiling a lot of people like this really interesting, diverse people, pretty much, you know, 75 and older, um, you know, like a swimmer and a, like very interesting, uh, you know, there's like a cheerleading team in their 80s, just just fascinating people with these incredible stories. And I just hate that people are missing out, you know, on this generation. Yeah. Okay. Completely. Yeah. Do we have any any final question or comment? Okay. Oh. Well, I just thank you so much for spending this time with us. What, what an honor to have you here tonight. Um, thank you for the invitation. Oh my goodness. And we will definitely be looking for your, your next films. And uh, and just I'm just so pleased that you have like this growing voice and, and um, influence, you know, as, as not that all of these awards mean that much, but if it gives you larger platforms to connect and educate, you know, that's just so encouraging. Thank uh, you. So thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, and uh, just on behalf of the library and, and the board of trustees and the friends of the library, we have our board president, Gail, here tonight. Um, we just thank you so much for uh, for just being part of this experience tonight and, and our programming. And um, and we just wish you all the best. And as I said, we'll be following. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for coming. And we will put the recording up tomorrow. OK. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you. OK. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.